Hello everyone, welcome to a painting tutorial by Static Grass Creations. My name is Jason, and today I will be showing you how I painted this Eldrad Uthran, Farseer of the Eldari. I'll do some blending and freehand while following the box art for inspiration. I've already primed the model black and the base white. Since he's mostly black in color anyways, I feel like I didn't need to do the zenithal highlighting this time. So the first color I use is Rakarth Flesh and base coat the inner lining of his cloak and all the bone motifs along the armor and helmet and the face on his staff. Ushapti Bone is watered down and layered on all the areas I previously painted on Rakarth Flesh. I apply the bone color liberally as I want to cover all the Rakarth flesh. In this case I find the previous color necessary so I'd only need a couple layers of Ushapti bone to get the coverage I want. Mixing Ushapti bone and Vallejo ivory in a 1 to 1 ratio, I get the first highlight. Again, watered down a bit so the coverage I get is smooth. I layer it on about halfway between what I determine to be the brightest areas of the bone and the shade. To finish off the highlight, I use pure Vallejo Ivory, again watered down so it's easier to blend with. I start with the part that I think should be the brightest and pull the paint down, creating a transition. I need to do a few layers of this to get the brightness that I'm looking for. I use scale color sunset purple to paint the front piece of the cloth and waistband. I already painted the trim of the cloth in the white, so I'm quite careful at painting this on. Next, I make a highlight of the sunset purple and Kizla flesh, either a 1 to 1 or a 3 to 2 ratio, and I layer it on. I add Vallejo ivory to the mix and carefully highlight the highest bits of the purple cloth. The Ayandan yellow contrast paint is applied to the trim of the cloak and the cloth. I don't need to use any more than one layer to get the color that I want. Next are the straps and pouches, including the scabbard. I paint those with Rhinox Hide. This is then highlighted with Mordfang Brown. Similar to the bone colors, I start at the points where I think the highlights should be brightest and pull down to the shadow. Lastly, the brown is highlighted again with Death Claw Brown. This will give the leathers a more yellow tone. Retributor armor is applied to the trim of the gems, bracelets, and the decor on top of the staff. Now that the Ayandan yellow has dried, I do an edge highlight of the now yellow trim with Vallejo Ivory. I'm not blending this time because I like the effect of the yellow and I don't want to change the tone. I use Reichland Flesh Shade on all the gold areas to give it some depth. Auric Armor Gold is used to highlight the gold parts. This needs a couple layers to get to the brightness I want. I 
I deepened the shading of the gold with Vallejo Mahogany. Since the gold parts are so tiny and intricate, I have to be pretty sparse with the brown. It's just to give more of a contrast to the gold. The shaft of the staff is painted in Vallejo gunmetal, the only part painted in silver. Finishing off the metallics, I do a final highlight on all the gold and silver parts with Vallejo chrome. I keep most of my painting to the edges and surfaces facing my light source, which is directly above Eldrad. I clean up the cloak and armor with Abaddon Black. I'm particularly careful around the bone areas, as it can get annoying to try and get back to the brightness I want when the black gets on it. I even cover the areas that don't have errors. This is a good chance to put on an even coat of the same black paint all over the model. Next, I work on the staff by painting on contrast paint, Kellen Green. With such a bright undercoat, I think the contrast paint really gives the face some great depth in the turquoise. Once dry, I mix 2 to 1 ratio of a Kellen Green and Vallejo Off-White as a highlight, carefully sticking to the raised areas and whatever's facing upwards. I want to make the effect feel like glass or have some sort of translucence. So I further highlight it by adding more off-white to the mix. My highlights are getting thinner and thinner and more carefully picked out. Like gems or glass, I finally pick out the highest and sharpest points in pure off-white. I think this completes the effect. Next we work on the gems. I start by base coating all of them in corn red. I'm careful not to get any on the gold trim I painted earlier on most of them. The Eldari in particular seem to have a lot of gemstones on most of their miniatures, much like the Aquila and Purity seals on Imperial miniatures. The first highlight layer is Evil Sun Scarlet. I paint about half of the gemstone on an angle away from my light source. I find I like gemstones effect this way. Gradually brightening the highlight, I paint the gems with Wild Rider Red, a brighter and slightly more orange color. The last layer I add is Troll Slayer Orange. This is applied in a thinner line at the bottom of the gem. To blend all the colors together, I paint over each gem in contrast paint Blood Angels Red. The gems are finished off with dots of white in an upper facing area. Now we're back onto the cloak. I use Vallejo USAF Dark Grey to highlight the fabric. I'm still blending the color, pushing the paint from darkest to brightest. Since the paint is so dark and thin, I find it easier to make a convincing blend on the cloth. The next color is Vallejo US Grey, blending it like the previous grey, but not taking up as much of the cloth. The box art has much sharper highlights, but I wanted mine to be soft, making it look and feel like a softer material.
The last highlight is Vallejo Aggressor Grey. I'm sticking to the highest waves. Aggressor Grey is a warm grey, so the tone of the cloak does get warmer. I wanted to make it contrast with the armor bits that uh, I will be working on next. I start highlighting the black armor with Vallejo Blue. It's a very dark blue, so it mostly serves to give the flat black a blue or a cool tone, even though they're only the edges are highlighted. The next highlight is Leho UK Mediterranean Blue. Since this blue is actually visible, I'm pretty much tracing over my dark blue underneath, just a thinner line. I make a one-to-one -one mix of off-white and UK Mediterranean blue for another highlight. This time I focus on the highlights on the upper half of the edges, mostly if they face upward. The last highlight for the armor is Vallejo Sky Blue. It's another off-white color, but a nice and cool looking white paint. I'm only painting certain edges and points that emphasize the sharp features of the helmet, shoulder blades, and weapons. Even though I put all that work blending the greys on the cloak, I want it to still darken the fabric, so I paint all over the cloak with null and oil. Now I finally start on the freehand. I first work on the purple cloth in the front with Leho Bone White. There are a couple lines that go straight across and that helps me center the rest of the design. When I paint the middle line and the stylized eye motif that you sometimes see on Eldari design, I finish off the base color by thickening the base of the middle line. I use Vallejo Off-White to highlight the freehand. I'm following how I highlighted the purple so the brush strokes are similar to each other when, when it's finished. Now nice and bright, I paint over the bone with Iandan Yellow Contrast Paint. Once dried, I go back and bring it up a little bit with Off-White for a final highlight. As I'm mostly following the box art, there are numerous runes on the trim of the cloak. I paint them in Abaddon Black. I go from top down, making simple short strokes, focusing on getting the shapes of the runes correct. I try to stop myself from lingering so only enough paint is applied to make the stroke and I don't need to go back and fix anything. Make sure to keep the paint wet. To the final stretch, I apply Seraphim Sepia to all the grooves in the base. I try not to get a lot outside of the indentations. I shade the ruined bits with Shabdi Bone, 
I'm focusing on underneath Eldrad and the parts that are sloped downward. The base is highlighted back up to off-white, making sure I avoid the sepia crevices. Some of the details are vines growing on the Wraithbone ruins that I paint in Vallejo Camouflage Green. The vines are then highlighted Vallejo Light Green. I was on the fence of adding basing material, but after looking at it for a few hours, I decided it does need some sand. I super glue on the gaps that don't have any ruins on it and spread it out with a small spatula, and then I pour fine sand over the base. Once it's completely dry, I base coat the sand in black and then paint it in Vallejo German Camo Medium Brown. I then apply a pretty heavy dry brush of Vallejo English Uniform. The last highlight is a relatively light dry brush of Ushab Depot. To bring down the shine from the washes and contrast paints, I airbrush on some matte varnish. It's only one layer so I don't affect the vibrancy of the colors, and the base is finished off with a couple of grass tufts. That completes Eldrad Uthran. I remember the old metal version of this guy back when this faction was called Eldar. Still a powerful psyker back then with a sword in the air and a helmet whose proportions were a touch too large for his body. Now I get the chance to paint this modernized sculpt complete with freehand. Such character. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial from Static Grass Creations. Stay tuned for more videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe.